I'm Insomniac, and this is the Aviate P51 Mustang Hitchcock. Okay, first of all, I'd like to give a big shout out to Olivia from Dartmouth Brands for reaching out about reviewing one of these watches. I've actually had my eye on some Aviate stuff for a while now, so I was eager to get my hands on something and see what it was like. Also, big news here for anybody who winds up watching this review and deciding, hey, I want to get one of those. Aviate has actually given me a special promo code that you can use to get 15% off of these watches. So if you use promo code should I time this at checkout, it's literally just the name of this channel take out the spaces. Should I time this at checkout, you can get 15% off of your AV8 purchase. Do keep in mind though, if you're watching this video when I released it, that the official launch date for this watch is actually August 6th. So if you're watching it anytime before then and you go to the site, you probably won't see this on there. So keep it in mind for August 6th and beyond. Remember, promo code should I time this at checkout. Also, two quick asks before we jump into this review. Number one, please subscribe. I have a ton of new watch reviews coming soon. You might have noticed that I've really been picking up the pace over here. Uh, we have some pretty cool stuff lined up. Also, I started new social media accounts for Should I Time This on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Those links are in the video description, plus I probably flashed them on screen somewhere here in editing. Do me a favor, give me a like and follow over there. Before we jump into the sections, I actually just wanted to give you a real quick look at the box. Uh, nothing interesting on the inside, but I thought the outside of this box was pretty unique. It's fairly heavy and it's all fabric covered with this cool Aviate logo stitched to the top of it. Nice little standout packaging touch here with the cool fabric box. The case on the P51 Mustang starts us off on a good note, starting with the shape of the case. At first glance, it's nothing special, but look closer and you'll see some great detail work here with the shape machining, and finishing. Under the bezel area, you'll notice that the sides of the case aren't just slabs that later curve down at the lugs, but rather from both sides and the top, you have clean continuous curves that flow down into the lug. The lugs themselves are machined nicely, and there's a curved edge stemming from underneath the bezel area that separates the lug from the side of the case. And the very tips of the lugs are these nice flattened surfaces that are angled both downward and outward. The bezel area is a really nice radial brushed surface. Case back is a screw down type with information about the watch nicely engraved around the outer edge, while the inner portion is an exhibition case back showing you the TMI NH35 automatic movement, which while rather plain overall does have an AV8 decorated rotor. You'll also notice that right on the window here, you have what appears to be a decal that says 10 goal Tommy. First of all, if it's a decal, it's on the inside of the window because you can't feel it with your fingernail. But more importantly, what is 10 Goal Tommy? What does it mean and why is it on here? The piece was inspired by Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Hitchcock of the US Army Air Forces back in World War II. Lieutenant Colonel Hitchcock directly influenced the development of the P-51 Mustang fighter plane. In fact, unfortunately he died while test flying an experimental version of the P-51 Mustang. He was also a championship polo player and the 10 Goal part is a reference to his 10 Goal handicap in polo. So there you go, now you have a full understanding of the 10 goal Tommy text and the name of the watch. The last part of this case I want to point out is the crown guard. It's a beautiful brushed steel piece with this raised dot pattern along the center line, fixed to the case with two small screws. It adds a really nice aesthetic touch to the case and it has a functional purpose as it actually does protect this crown from getting snagged or impacted in any way. And surprisingly enough, the relatively flat crown under this crown guard is actually grippy enough and accessible enough that I don't have any issue winding or setting the watch. And as for finishing, it's a mix of brushed and polished finishing as you saw on screen, all done in a stealthy, smoky gunmetal color. The finishing everywhere on this case is nicely done. The case overall is nicely done. The dial on this watch is really the main event here, as it should be with most watches, but more so on this watch than maybe anything else I've reviewed on this channel so far. Somehow Aviate managed to create a dial that's massively detailed and complicated while being simultaneously simple and legible. 
and there are so many details to appreciate here. Let's start with the layers before we dive into the details of those layers. On the highest layer of dial, you have the chapter ring and this quarter plate in the upper right quadrant. You have what could be considered to be the main dial surface below that, then you have an even lower layer which consists of two different colored surfaces showing through underneath the numbered cutouts and a recessed ring around the center of the dial and if you want to be technical here there's another layer with the date disc which appears to be set even deeper into the dial than everything else all of this gives the dial an incredible depth and not an illusion of depth actual depth at the outermost edge of the dial, you have a raised chapter ring with a mix of black painted indices between black applied indices at every five minute interval. And look closely here and you'll see one of the many great subtle details on this dial. All of those applied markers hang over the chapter ring just a tiny bit, with the exception of the 12, 3, 6, and 9 markers. Then staying up at this level for a moment, you have this really cool quarter plate in the upper right quadrant, which appears to be held on by these three small flathead screws, giving this portion of the dial a cool classic instrument panel feel. And yet another tiny detail here is the screws themselves. Notice that the indentation on all three screws is perfectly horizontal. Nice. The base of this plate is a clean linear brushed steel, and you have an alternate pattern of painted or decaled characters and cutouts, uh, cutouts at the zero and two, uh, with painted or decaled 5 and the aviate text in place of the 3, which is a cool position for the branding on this dial. Before we go any further, let me point out another unique detail that you might have already noticed. The numerals around the dial are an alternate mix of hour numerals and minute numerals. So some of them, such as the 5 and 7, are showing you an hour numeral, while the alternates, such as the 40 and 55, are showing you minute numerals, which for some might come across as confusing, but personally I found it to be really quirky in a cool way. Next you have what would basically be considered the main dial. It's this really cool randomly scratched or worn looking mechanical style steel which has a great authentic look and texture to it. At the 6 and 9 positions you have these tall applied black rectangular markers. Meanwhile at 4, 8, and 11 or in this case 20, 40, and 55 you have painted or decaled numerals while at 5, 7, and 10 you have dial cutouts which expose a dark steel color under the 5 and 7, but a bright blue color under the 10, which perfectly matches the bright blue outer length of the second hand and the counterbalance on the second hand, and the automatic text on the dial above the date window. And I'll pause here again to talk about the splash of blue that I just pointed out. Another great detail, not only does this particular blue really pop against the dark steel of the dial, but there's just enough blue here to be a fun, subtle splash of color without being overdone or cheesy. It's really nice. The font used for the cutouts is really cool too, and it goes with the vintage military theme, as they look like an old army stencil. Very cool. Down above the 6 o'clock position, you have a date window centered nicely on the lower portion of the dial, outlined by a subtle black border, and another solid aesthetic choice here, it's a white numeral on a black disc, which matches the dial much better than if they would have used a standard black numeral on a white disc. Last but not least, we have the hands, which are also awesome. All three of the hands are black with the exception of the blue accents on the second hand. All three hands are perfect lengths for this dial, with the minute and second hands reaching out to just above the chapter ring. The shape of all three hands is aesthetically perfect with this dial, and the decision to skeletonize the minute and hour hands not only adds great visual continuity with the stencil-like cutouts on the dial, but it allows you to see all of the great textures and layers of the dial underneath the hands. So this was by far the longest dial section that I've ever had in any of my reviews, but there are just so many details to feast your eyes on here, which is why I'm so impressed with how simple and legible the dial is overall. This was really very well thought out. The only usable complication on this watch is the date at 6 o'clock. It's small but very legible and utilizes a clean font, and the date is always snugly but perfectly centered in the window. It's a simple but very useful and usable complication. Time at a glance on this piece is actually the weakest point of this watch, but keep in mind that there are four color variations of this piece, and the other three actually offer a solid amount of contrast between the hands and markers against their respective dials, but I picked this one for its overall stealthy look. That stealthy look, however, is the reason why time at a glance is just okay on this watch. As discussed in the dial section, the overall layout of this dial is surprisingly uncluttered, despite how much detail is happening here. The hands are perfect lengths and all have nicely pointed tips. 
but the black hands and indices really get lost on this dial if you're in any situation with less than optimal lighting to the extent that I could barely read the time on this thing outside at dusk. So if you want high contrast, I'd suggest checking out one of the other three options for this piece. The strap on this watch is another highlight because as opposed to many of the straps that come across on this channel, it wasn't just an afterthought slapped on here to hold the watch body on your wrist. Some thought went into this. First we have the aesthetics. The gray leather matches the watch well. The black free loops are a nice contrasting touch which match the hands on the watch. The stitched padded leather design was inspired by the P51 Mustang seats. So another great tie-in to the visual inspiration for the watch. And the buckle is brushed perfectly to match the case and has the AV8 logo nicely embossed into it. Then there's the length of the strap, which is uncommon because it's longer than most standard watch straps, but you'll appreciate that if you're somebody with a larger wrist who usually finds most stock straps to be on the short side for you. And lastly, there's comfort. It's thick enough to be durable, feel substantial, and be well balanced with the watch, yet it's pliable and comfortable from day one right out of the box. And if you look here on screen, you'll notice almost no creasing or significant wear on the strap. And I've been wearing this watch a lot in the month or more that I've had it here, so very happy with this strap. Last but not least, we have value. And as of the time of this review, this is a brand new watch. Literally, technically not even released yet. Like I said in the beginning of the video, launch date is August 6th. This watch is on the AV8 site for $350. But remember, you have my 15% off coupon code link what is it it's a promo code right i'll put it here on screen again promo code and there's a link down in the video description if you use that it's under 300 dollars for that money you're getting one of the most detailed and unique watches that i've ever seen in that price point plus a reliable movement solid build quality a comfortable strap and just tons of character in my opinion it's honestly a great value at that price so another big shout out to olivia for sending this in and remember use my link i should have waited till after i was done to put this watch back on Okay, and remember, use the link in the video description and promo code should I time this at checkout to get 15% off of your AVA purchase. Please subscribe, I have a ton more videos coming. Share the video with fellow watch lovers. Hit the like button. All of that stuff YouTubers have to say all the time. And I'll see you all at the next review.